In this video we are going to work with a device that can detect infrared light. Light waves have different wavelengths. Ultraviolet light has a short wavelength. It is below 380 nanometers. Visible light has wavelengths between 380 and 750 nanometers. Infrared light has wavelengths above 750 nanometers and is also called thermal radiation. You have experienced it at a campfire. Some snakes have so-called pit organs, which can pick up infrared light. All living beings emit small amounts of infrared light, and in this way snakes with pit organs can bite their prey even if they cannot see it. There is also an electronic device that can detect infrared light. It is called a PIR sensor. PIR means Passive Infrared, which tells that it does not itself emit infrared light, but only receives what other sources emit. The sensitive unit is covered by a special removable plastic lens. The sensor does not respond to the intensity of infrared light, but to the changes of the infrared light that occur due to movements. This technique is used for sensors in burglar alarms and for sensors that turn on the light outside the house when someone approaches. If we turn the sensor around, we find two small wheels that can be turned. If you turn the wheel for sensitivity clockwise, you get the greatest sensitivity of up to 7 meters. If the wheel for delay is turned completely clockwise, an impulse will last for 5 minutes. I turn it completely to the left counterclockwise, and here the delay is approximately 3 seconds. In this photo you can see how the terminals are to be connected to ground and to a positive voltage between 4.5 volts and 20 volts. Here you need to use the terminal called VCC. The middle leg is the output. When an impulse arrives it stays high for just as long time as the delay is set. Out in the corner there is a yellow jumper that can set the sensor for single triggering or repeatable triggering. That is something I will explain later in the video. Here is a diagram showing how we will connect the PIR sensor to our microbit. Unfortunately it does not work properly with 3 volts from the microbit. So we supply it with an extra power source between 4.5 and 6 volts. The two power sources must have a common ground. The sensor output is connected to P2 on the microbit. As a primitive solution you can bend the sensor terminals a bit with pliers and connect it using standard test cables. But I have chosen to mount it all on a board, which also gives a good overview of the setup. Out at the edge I have mounted a bent brass nail to hold the sensor in place. And then I connected the terminals with small test leads, which I connected to the microbit as shown here. In order not to solder on the microbit, I mounted it with screws. At the underside I have lifted it up a bit with some small bushings. Now the setup looks like this. I start by connecting a buzzer to P0 and ground. And then I supply the microbit with this program. If we look on the buzzer as a siren, I have now made a burglar alarm. After the power is turned on, the PIR sensor will take a few minutes to adjust. If it gets direct sunlight, it can be triggered. Remember that the sensor output now is high for approximately 3 seconds, and that it takes 3 seconds more before it is ready to react again. 
Now I want to try if infrared light can go through glass. Then I try acrylic, it does not work either. On the other hand, the infrared light can easily pass through a plastic bag. Now I want to emulate a system where the light is turned on if there is not so much light and if there is movement in front of the sensor. I have therefore connected an LED to P0 and ground. The program has changed a little bit. With the amount of light I have in the room, the LED starts to light up when I move my hand. But if I illuminate the microbit, it does not respond. Now I want to show the difference between single triggering and repeatable triggering. I therefore move the jumper to repeatable triggering. Now the LED stays on and it lights for 3 seconds after I stop moving my hand. This is a good feature if you have to keep light in a room for as long as there are people in it. If I move the jumper to single triggering again, the LED will only light for 3 seconds and it will take another 3 seconds before the sensor is ready again. Here is a setup where I have combined my moving message from a previous video with the PIR sensor. You can find a detailed explanation of how it works in the video Moving Message Sign with Microbits. The microbit on the board must be provided with this program. The first microbit in the moving message must have this program. And here is the program for the second microbit in the moving message. The following microbits must have similar programs but the numbers 2 and 3 must be changed to 3 and 4, etc. Now I have made a server motor open a door as I approach. Before mounting the server motor, it is wise to make a test program like this. In that way you can better see how the small plastic arm shall be mounted. I have attached a bent clips with a little tape.
I stuck the clip into the door in this way. And here you can see how the terminals of the server motor shall be connected. The program looks like this. In the last section I will show how I can control my Canon camera with a PIR sensor and a micro bit. If you want to make the same experiment, it is of course at your own risk. I started by buying a remote shutter release like this one. When you cut it over, you can see that it contains three wires. With a multimeter, I found out that the blue wire in my version is ground. Then I put the cord in my camera and turned it on. When I connect the green wire to ground, the camera is focusing. When I connect the red wire to ground, the camera takes a picture. Then I soldered the wires to my board so that the red wire exposure is connected to P0 and the green wire focus is connected to P1. The blue wire is connected to ground. Then I supply the micro bit with this program. When the sensor detects a movement, it is focusing and 200 milliseconds later the picture is taken. Here I have turned on the camera and I have set it to take several pictures one after the other. I walk towards it while filming with the phone. The pictures taken look like this. The last thing I want to show is how to make the camera take photos at several minutes intervals over e.g. one or two hours. The camera must be on all the time and the battery must be well charged. The program looks like this. At startup the variables are initiated. This section takes a picture if the desired time has elapsed. The time between each shot can be selected with button A and with button B you can check how many pictures have been taken. The setup can be made by help of test cables as shown here. Here is a nice blob of Italian ice cream that melts. It took approximately half an hour. The clouds here are taken over one hour and they are shown at a speed that is 120 times the real one.